Hi, my name's Alex Lindley. Uh, I wanted to do a video um, to share my experiences and some insights into what I consider to be um, important aspects when considering a garage management system. Uh, so if you're watching this video, hopefully you're in the market. Um, I'm not going to focus on features. I'm just going to focus on um, other aspects that I personally think that you should be considering um, if you are looking at a garage management system. For clarity, um, my job role is managing director at uh, Lindley's Auto Centres, which is a chain of garages based out of Nottingham. I'm also a company director of Garage Hive, which may be one of the systems that you are looking at. I'm going to do my best to make this video as impartial um, as I possibly can. Um, I have been on the journey quite recently with Lindley's Auto Centres before I joined Garage Hive, uh, when we were looking for a management system for ourselves. Um, and I just wanted to share some of those considerations. We're very lucky that we're in an industry that has um, a lot on offer. And there are several really good management systems out there, um, one of which will suit your business the best. Um, and we're just very fortunate that we're now able to compete with dealership systems where previously they were just not accessible to the independent sector. Um, we now we've got a great bunch of companies all pushing each other, um, all developing uh, these systems in a great way. Um, so lots of systems speak about their features, which is, which is a big factor. But I wanted to give some insight into the other things that you should be uh, considering uh, when switching management systems. So the first topic I want to speak about is why you're looking for a new system. <clears throat> so it's quite a popular conversation in the forums. And sometimes you can be forced into making a decision because everyone else seems to be making that decision. Um, but the, the decision should be because it's there's a pain in your business that you're trying to solve or you're looking for the future, uh, making that longer term sort of decision and investment. So when considering a system, um, you've got obviously your short term, your medium term and your long term, and your long term goals won't be the same as your short term goals. But what I would strongly recommend that you stay away from is trying to solve a short term problem with a management system. For example, you're currently using a uh, paper diary, and you want to go digital, but you have ambitions for your business to be self-sustainable in the next five years, let's say, you could switch to a system that is a very basic system, let's say a non-cloud based, essentially a, a smart invoicing system, which would give you great benefits over paper, but you would quickly run into issues when you're trying to stabilize some sort of processes through the business, um, start analyzing data, or um, even reaching that long-term goal, which is stepping away from the business and putting a manager in place. So my first uh, recommendation is don't solve short term problems. Um, look to the medium term as a minimum and ideally, ideally to the long term. The downside to that is potentially you'll pay more in during the short term. Um, but the price shouldn't be the biggest factor. Changing system, changing processes is, is something that's difficult and you should plan to reach your goal, whatever that goal may be and start moving towards that goal now, which means you need a system in place that um, can, as I said, put processes in your business that people stick to, which are systemized, which those processes run through your management system. Um, let's say you want three front of house staff, five technicians, um, that's gonna require some level of complexity from the system. And if you really are planning long-term, which is my preference, personally, I think you should always be looking at the long-term and planning towards that. You're going to need a system that can then allow you as a business owner to step away and let's say you have the same level of front of house a couple more technicians and you put a manager in place and to run that business effectively or to even get to the point where you can run your business like that you need information so make sure that whatever system you use can capture the data and present the data in a way that um, is easy to act upon um, allowing you to make one, informed decisions to reach your long-term goal, but two, to be able to keep it sustainable when you are not in the business, if that is your goal. So to summarize, what are you trying to achieve by changing system? Is there a particular pain? Don't try and solve that one single pain. Look to the future. Changing management system, especially as there are so many great ones on the market now, isn't something you want to do for fun. It doesn't matter which system you go to, there will be pain involved. Um, just make sure that pain's worth it and make sure that you, you, you don't have to go down that, 
that journey again. The next point to consider for me personally is do you want cloud-based or do you want uh, local, locally hosted? So most systems now are cloud-based. Um, <clears throat> gone are the times where it would the, the risk outweighed the benefits. I, I think that internet is generally speaking in most places in the country stable enough now to warrant a cloud-based system. Um, and a lot of the risk can actually be mitigated um, through sort of 5G backup systems now through broadband. Um, but what you need to consider if you are going cloud, which is quite likely now if you're considering switching management systems, is how stable that system is from the company's perspective. So don't be afraid to ask those sorts of questions. Um, you need to find out how it's hosted, how it's backed up. Uh, is your can can you roll your system back in case there's any any sort of emergencies? What's the security like? And most importantly, how fast is the system? So get a demo of the system. Just navigate the system. Make some documents. Just see if it feels fast. There isn't really an excuse these days for a cloud-based system to really be any slower than a local system if your building has fiber broadband, which again, it's a bit of a sweeping statement, but most businesses these days have fiber broadband. So um, yeah, I'm not really here to speak about cloud versus non-cloud, but as I said, where is it hosted? Um, is the hosting secure? Does it have full rollback and backup capabilities? Um, don't be afraid to ask these questions. These are things that you may not consider, um, but they are vitally important, especially when um, planning on switching to the cloud. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to speak specifics about features. Um, most of the prime uh, systems you'll be considering all have a very similar feature set, uh, which looks great on paper. But what you must consider is how those features mesh, mesh together to create a nice workflow through the system and this really comes down to usability so in my opinion from the customer receiving a text message reminder all the way through to your account system it should be almost a seamless transaction through the system this includes things like vehicle health checks online booking job sheet creation estimate estimate authorization parts ordering how does the system handle all of these great features? How how does the workflow look with them all being meshed together? Um, and this is where a demo is really important. So once you have the buy-in for that product and you, you like the company, you've decided you, that's a, a, a product that you're considering, make sure you understand the workflow. So you don't want any, if, if you decide to go live with that system, you don't want any surprises on how that system actually functions on a day-to-day -day basis. Just because it has all the great features, it doesn't mean it's a nice system to use. So make sure that you have a demo, a demonstration, and then make sure you get a trial yourself so you can actually test the flow through the system. Is it logical? Does it fit your business process? If it doesn't fit your business process, can you change your process or can the system change to match your process? These are all really important considerations. So features are great, but the flow through the system and how it manages your day-to-day -day business is much more important than a pretty feature set. Possibly the most important consideration for me is your ability to go meet the team behind the management system. Um, this won't be possible with some systems, um, but for me personally, I think that as the management system sits at the core of your business, or it should sit, if it's a good system, it will sit at the core of your business, the support team of that management system, by definition, will almost become an extension of your own team. Um, and it's really important to me that you get on with that team um, and you establish a relationship with that team. And it's not an awful lot to ask, in my opinion. So if you can, um, go on, see if you can get an on-site demonstration, whether, whether that's someone initially coming to you or ideally you get to go to them. Um, meet the team, meet... Um, the support team, meet the management team, and just see if they're your kind of people. Um, I think that the, the culture of the company that you're buying from um, has to be aligned with your culture. And you, you'll both be in a much happier place um, if you are a good fit for each other. So um, if you can, 
go and meet the team. Um, the other thing you also have to do is put a lot of trust and faith into the uh, company that's running your management system because we're in an industry that's moving very quick and they have to respond equally as quick and keep the system up to date and keep progressing um, keep coming up with new ideas and ways for you to stand out from the crowd um, so you also have to have faith that they know how to run a good business um, and that they've got your interest your best interests um, at heart following on from uh, meeting the team uh, the system is only the system will only ever be as good as it's used by your staff so what's critically important to me is the implementation offers and the training and support offers followed up by very comprehensive documentation so depending on the size of the business and depending on your um, how much time you want to put into the project of implementing a new management system um, explore what packages they have on offer to come and implement the system for you so um, this could be remote training um, at, at, in my opinion at a minimum ideally this is on-site training it will come with a cost uh, but it will pay pay back very quickly um, if your staff understand how to use a system and, and, and are actually using it how it was designed to be used um, so see if on-site implementation is available see what training is available if you're not having on-site make sure the documentation is very detailed and good enough for your staff to actually understand and reference and then finally support is critical so the only way you're going to know just how good their support is is by speaking to other customers that use that system um, you in most circumstances are going to need phone support make sure they've got a good ticket system um, make there may be other channels of support which um, you just need to ask the business about um, but support is really important it doesn't matter how good the system is it doesn't even matter how good the implementation is if you can't get access to somebody quickly um, it, under the heat of a day and you're stuck then it can get very expensive very quickly um, so to summarize see what implementation um, is available see if there's remote training available um, check the documentation out for yourself perhaps use the documentation yourself if you have a trial uh, and most importantly how good is their support ring the support line see how quickly you get an answer just just do, do some experimenting and speak to some existing customers about support it's not a particularly exciting subject to speak about but it is very important um, you must consider how your management system is going to work for you and your account your accounts or your accountancy system so um check whether it's got an integrated uh, um, a built-in accountancy system so some garage manage management systems are also your accountancy system that are capable of doing your vat returns um, producing statements customer ledgers profit and losses etc um, if not then check the integrations this is critically important um, do not sign up to a management system unless you have total faith that it works very well with your existing accountancy system alternatively be prepared to move accountancy system so i'll take zero as a good example uh, zero is um, what i would consider to be a decent accountancy system but it has a very good um, integration capabilities and there are lots of management systems that will actually integrate with zero and this will give you functionality such as um, your sales invoices and purchase invoices that go through your management system can uh, be pushed to your accountancy system without the need to export um, spreadsheets uh, via Excel and then, then manually import these spreadsheets. So again, pretty boring, but it can cause an awful lot of pain if you don't consider it. So ideally it's built in. If you want to change, if your accountant's willing to change, involve your accountant in this decision as well. That's very good advice. Don't blindside them. Let them know what you're doing, especially if you're changing system. Um, make sure they're informed um, because it can cause a lot of pain um, and see what the um, integrations are like with any third party, third party accountancy systems. Contracts and contract lengths to me are important. So make sure before you sign up to any system, you are fully aware of the contract terms um you understand any cooldown periods 
And if the system's not for you, how quickly can you back out of that system? Now, in this day and age, providing the company is not providing you with any hardware or there's no long-term cost to that company and providing you're paying upfront for, let's say, uh, system setup, uh, on-site training and implementation, for example, and then your only cost from that point onwards is just a subscription of the software, I believe that the length of the contract is directly correlated to the confidence that company has in their product. Changing management system, as I've mentioned previously, is not a good experience in most circumstances. It's incredibly tough. You're ripping out the heart of the company and replacing it with a new one. Um, most people don't like change. You'll get staff resistance. That to me is a good enough reason for you to stick around, providing the software keeps its promise, keeps up to date and makes you not want to look elsewhere. So that's my opinion. Be very cautious of contracts. Don't get wrapped up in a contract. Um, it comes with an element of risk. We all understand contracts. So just go in with your eyes wide open. Given the pace at which the motor industry is moving, it is vitally important that your garage management system keeps up. So do some research into the way the company handles development requests. Does it listen to its users? Um, take a look around their community pages, have a look at their documentation to see what features have been released. None of this should be secret. Um, they should have, um, each system should have some sort of change log so you can actually see the tangible developments that have been done um, on that product. Um, you are putting essentially a lot of eggs in that basket and they have to keep up with the demands of the industry. Them falling behind um, can give your competition the edge over you, particularly when it comes to things like CRM features, for example, any sort of customer facing aspect, any, any customer facing part of the product um, really has to be cutting edge um, to give you the best chance to stand out from your local competition. So to summarize, how much do they develop? What's their response and how do they respond to um, development requests from its users? Um, and just see if you can actually get into some sort of community page just to see this actually in action. My last piece of advice for you uh, when making this decision is demo the products that you like the look of, listen to what the salesman has to say, but make sure you do your own research with the actual users of that system. So we, we live in a time on Facebook where there are really no secrets. There are lots of great forums. Um, lots of softwares tend to have their own forums as well. They're either um, managed by the software company or they're purely community driven um, and the users set the forums up. But you can, without too much difficulty, get genuine feedback from existing customers. And these are the people that you really need to be speaking to. So it doesn't matter how good you feel about the software after speaking to the team or seeing the software in action or whatever videos that you watch, speak to the actual customers. Um, read reviews of the software, um, just as, the, as you would on Amazon. There are plenty of systems that have plenty of reviews. Make sure you read the reviews. Even better than reviews are case studies. So um, less emotional, more tangible results of um, basically facts and figures of um, how businesses have performed since um, switching um, to those management systems. And if you read a case study or a review, you can probably track the business down, give that business a ring, get their feedback on how they use the system, make sure they still use the system. Um, so yeah, do your research outside of listening to what the company has to say, get onto community forums, get onto Facebook, join the forums of the software, Ask the salesman if there's any forum that you can join to speak to existing customers and just listen to the communities that revolve around those softwares. That's where you're going to get your best feedback. Um, and that's the feedback that really matters. The salesman will demo you the features. You make sure that fits your business, but then to understand in addition to that, speak to the people that use it.